The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I am reviewing the Guardian, Seeker, and Rogue cards. In the secret name, the first Mythos pack in the cycle on the Circle Undone cycle. I'm uh, reviewing the new gold multi-class cards separately, so that means that uh, there will be three cards in this review. If you uh, enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. There are spoilers throughout. Kaziah Mason and uh, Brown Jenkin are on the prowl, so uh, let's get started. The uh, first card in the pack is a Guardian Asset. This is something worth fighting for. It's a 3 card asset with a willpower skill icon and the talent trait. It has the following game text. Something worth fighting for may be assigned horror dealt to other investigators at your location. And it has 3 sanity. Something worth fighting for is the sanity version of True Grit, the uh, Guardian Asset from the Path to Carcosa Deluxe expansion. True Grit uh, makes the cut in quite a few Mark Harrigan decks, since Mark can uh, dump damage on it to fuel his impressive card draw engine. Players have uh, also experimented with True Grit in a variety of other investigators, either to shore up their own health or that of their counterparts in uh, multiplayer, since it may be assigned damage dealt to other in another investigator at your location as well. True Grit uh, does have certain advantages over similar cards, such as uh, Bulletproof Vest from the core set. Those advantages include the fact that it uh, doesn't cost any experience points, it doesn't take up a slot, and it's uh, non-unique, so you can have multiples in play. Something Worth Fighting For also compares favorably to its core set counterpart, Elder Sign Amulet. Something Worth Fighting For is uh, slightly more expensive than the Elder Sign Amulet, and it uh, doesn't soak quite as much horror but it uh, doesn't cost any experience points, it doesn't take up a slot, and it's non-unique, so you can have multiple copies of it in play at the same time. Something Worth Fighting For uh, is more attractive to Guardians than True Grit since most of them have health for days but sanity values in the 5 or 6 range, the obvious exception being Carolyn Fern. Unfortunately for cards like uh, True Grit and Something Worth Fighting For, allies do exist, if you're in the market for some extra health or sanity, I think you're much better off spending those hard-earned resources on an ally, which usually comes with a kick-ass special ability in addition to a nice pool of health and or sanity. One ally that immediately comes to mind uh, is Brother Xavier, a guardian ally from the Miskatonic Museum. Brother Xavier gives you plus one willpower, three additional health and sanity, and an amazing special ability that can help you take down an enemy when he is defeated. Brother Xavier may also be assigned horror dealt to other investigators at your location, just like something worth fighting for. Brother Xavier does cost one experience point, and he's slightly more expensive than something worth fighting for, but I think it's a small price to pay for a vastly superior card. Personally, I've uh, never been much of a true fan of True Grit, and I uh, suspect I will end up feeling the same way about something worth fighting for. When uh, True Grit was released, I played around with it in uh, Mark Harrigan, but I found that uh, more often than not, it was uh, just sat in my hand because I was unwilling to spend the action and three resources to play it. When I uh, saw something worth fighting for, I immediately thought of Carolyn Fern. However, Carolyn's special ability triggers only if you heal horror from an ally asset. The only way Carolyn can heal something worth fighting for is with Ancient Stone Mines in Harmony, and uh, that upgrade was released in the City of Archives. Carolyn has a lot of hoops to jump through before she can include Ancient Stone Mines in Harmony in her deck, so if you decide to go that route, you probably won't be healing something worth fighting for until mid to late campaign. I uh, can see myself putting something worth fighting for in a deck, drawing it during the upkeep phase, and uh, immediately wishing it was another card, because I don't want to spend an action and three resources to play it, especially if I can play an ally that will do the uh, same, if not better, job. Something Worth Fighting For may be more appealing to Guardians than True Grit, since it provides extra sanity rather than extra health, but uh, Guardians seem to be doing pretty well without this card uh, at the moment, so I'm not sure why they would uh, happen to need it now. The second card we're looking at is a Seeker event. This is Crack the Case. It's a free event with an intellect skill icon and the insight trait. 
It's fast and has the game text, play after an investigator discovers the last remaining clue at your location. Investigators at that location gain a total of X resources distributed as you wish. X is that location's shroud value. Resource generation plays a very important role in the Arkham Horror LCG and most of the classes have received new tools of late to help them keep their resource pools topped up. During the uh, Forgotten Age cycle, survivors received Take Heart in the Heart of the Elders Mythos pack, while Rogues and Mystics received Payday and Sacrifice, respectively, in the uh, City of Archives Mythos pack. Crack the Case appears to be the uh, Seeker entry in the Resource Sweepstakes, and uh, the card has a lot going for it. First, it's, uh, it's free. Second, it's got an Intellect Skill icon, which uh, Emergency Cash does not. Third, it's fast, and fourth, it has the insight trait, which means it's a candidate for Joe Diamond's hunch deck. It's also a potential target for Joe's Detective Colt 1911s. And uh, before I forget, you can also duplicate a copy of Crack the Case in your discard pile with uh, eidetic memory from Dim Carcosa. The beauty of Crack the Case is that you don't have to be the investigator who discovers the last remaining clue at your location. You uh, just have to be there when it happens. Investigators at that location gain X resources, but you get to distribute them as you wish, which is an extremely rare ability. The only other cards that I can think of that let you straight up give another investigator resources are Teamwork, a Guardian event from the Dunwich Legacy, Stand Together, a Guardian event from the Essex County Express, and Strange Solution, Empowering Elixir, a Seeker asset from the Return to the Dunwich Legacy box. While the ability to give another investigator resources is uh, irrelevant in solo, it can certainly help in multiplayer. Guardians and Mystics in particular would certainly appreciate having a Seeker in the group who could help them crack the case and pay for some of their expensive assets. Crack the case may also be useful in Seeker and off-class Seeker decks that fuel effects by placing clues on locations using cards such as Dr. William T. Mallison from Lost in Time and Space, Forewarned from the Unspeakable Oath, and Quick Study from the Boundary Beyond. I wasn't all that crazy about Quick Study when it was released, but if you drop a clue on your location with it to gain plus three skill value for a skill test, then later rediscover that clue either by taking an investigate action or through trickery such as Roland Banks's response or evidence, you could then play Crack the Case to generate a few resources as well. The combination does have a fair number of moving parts, but if you're dropping clues, you might as well try to get something a little extra when you rediscover them. The only drawback of Crack the Case, and uh, it's a minor one, is that the number of resources you gain from it depends on the location's shroud value. The average shroud value on locations tends to vary from scenario to scenario and campaign to campaign, but you should be able to play Crack the Case for three or even four resources most of the time. Crack the Case is free and fast, so gaining one or two resources isn't a bad deal, since uh, all it costs you is the card. Crack the Case is a pretty sweet card that is going to see play in Seeker and off-class Seeker decks. Seekers have received several very pricey cards of late, including Fingerprint Kit and Connect the Dots in the Circle Undone, so Crack the Case is a timely addition to the game. I can also see investigators such as Roland Banks, Carolyn Fern, and Marie Lambeau taking a shine to this card to help them afford their expensive assets. Crack the Case may even replace Emergency Cash in certain builds since it's free, fast, and comes with a skill icon. It uh, doesn't guarantee that you will gain three resources like Emergency Cash, but uh, that restriction is relatively easy to play around depending on the scenario. Besides, uh, I might even be willing to settle for a resource or two less if I know I don't have to take an action to get them. This is, uh, this is a pretty great card. The third card in the pack is a rogue event. This is Intel Report. It's a two-cost event with two intellect skill icons and the favor and service traits. It has the game text, discover one clue at your location. Response, when you play Intel Report, increase its cost by two. Change, discover one clue to discover two clues. Response, when you play Intel Report, increase its cost by two. Change at your location to at a location up to two connections away. Intel Report is an exciting card because it explores some new design space. It's the first card of its kind that lets an investigator spend additional resources for an additional effect or effects. Rogues are getting at least one more card this cycle, a uh, distraction from Union and Disillusion that uses this sort of template, and uh, it probably won't be the last. Intel Report is a pretty sweet card for rogues. 
It has two intellect skill icons, which are always nice to see in a class that's uh, not known for its intellect. And you may spend two resources to discover a clue without making a skill test. If uh, cards such as uh, Drawn to the Flame have taught us anything, the ability to dis discover a clue without making a skill test is extremely powerful, especially if you're playing on hard or expert difficulty. Spending two resources to grab a clue without making a skill test can save you time and resources in the long run, and it lets you ignore any nasty surprises that come along with investigating. But uh, that's not all. If you trigger Intel Report's first response and spend two more resources, you get to discover two clues instead of one. If you're uh, playing in solo, there are relatively few locations that have two clues on them, but it's uh, nice to know that you've got the option to clear a location if necessary. When I'm playing the Untamed Wild or the Doom of Estli, for example, one of my favorite tricks is to hang on to a Drawn to the Flame to clear the Ruins of Estli or the Chamber of Time, respectively. Now uh, rogues can pull off the same trick using Intel Report. If that's not enough, this card has uh, one more trick up its sleeve. If you trigger Intel Report's second response and spend two resources, you may discover a clue at a location up to two connections away. This ability is probably more useful in multiplayer than solo, but it's a fantastic way to hoover up clues in those hard-to-reach places that are inaccessible or uh, cut off by enemies. For example, Intel Report can uh, give you a leg up when you confront Silas Bishop in the Hidden Chamber during Blood on the Altar. If those resources are really burning a hole in your pocket, you can spend a total of six of them to trigger both responses to discover two clues at a location up to two locations away. Again, you'll likely trigger this ability more often in multiplayer than in solo since uh, the location you target needs to have clues on it, which probably means you or another investigator has been there at least once already. However, I can think of a few scenarios such as Lost in Time and Space and A Fandom of Truth where this type of ability would uh, be gold. If a bunch of enemies are with the Hunter keyword are in hot pursuit, you can keep on trucking and discover the clues at a distance. Intel Report is also great in scenarios that make it dangerous to hang out in a given location for too long. The uh, Pallid Mask and Black Star's Rise are two scenarios that immediately come to mind. Now you can simply move away and grab the clues with Intel Report. Make no mistake, uh, six resources is a lot of scratch, but if there is an investigator who can afford it, it's uh, probably a rogue. I really like the idea, this uh, type of card design in general, and Intel Report in particular. The ability to discover a clue or two at your location or another location up to two connections away without making a skill test is really, really good. I can already think of a bunch of situations when this type of ability would come in handy, and I'm sure there will be plenty more as the Circle Undone cycle unfolds. Six resources is a lot to spend on an event, but uh, I expect to play this card for two or four resources most of the time. That's going to do it for my review of the Guardian, Seeker, and Rogue cards in the secret name. We're uh, only three cards in, but the, this pack is already looking very strong. Crack the Case and Intel Report are both excellent cards that are going to find their way into a lot of decks going forward. Something worth fighting for is probably the weakest card of the bunch, but uh, it may turn out to be more useful than True Grit, since it does shore up a weakness in many, uh, many a Guardian. I still think you're better off investing in an ally than this card, but uh, investigators have only one ally slot unless they pick up Charisma. Something worth fighting for does offer a healthy dose of extra sanity without requiring that sort of investment. So far, uh, so good here on uh, in the uh, Secret Name Mythos pack. That's going to do it for this review. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromleng at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromleng. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.